Shy way. Halo Infinite is imploding before our eyes. The servers aren't working. I can't even find ranked games. Halo is dead, bro. It's been dead for three years. Are you seriously going to make a video about grenade jumping today? Yeah. Yes, I am. The server situation in Halo Infinite does suck right now, for the record. And the fact that 343 haven't even addressed it yet tells me that they themselves are not fully equipped to immediately fix it. So I don't know, like, if there was something I could do to help, if my salty tears could somehow miraculously supercharge the Halo servers, then I would collect them in this comically large water bottle and sell it to 343 like that girl with the bathwater. But that would be ridiculous. So instead, I figure we could off ourselves with some frag grenades today. That's right, nade jumping is finally back in Halo, a legendary feature in the Halo franchise. And today, we're going to discuss it from the ground up, how it works, where to use it, and whether it's a game changer in competitive play. And 343, if you happen to be watching at the end of the video, I have suggestions on how to make it even better after you fix the servers, please. Okay, so first off, how do you nade jump? You throw a nade and then you jump and that is all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Just kidding, there's a little bit more to it than that. There's three things you wanna keep in mind as far as I can tell. First is your positioning over the nade when it blows up. And then there's your jump timing when it explodes and your forward momentum before you jump is important as well. If you want the highest possible nade jump, you have to be positioned directly above the nade and you have to time your jump just before the explosion. That was a pretty good one. And be holding forward on the controller stick to ensure that some of that forward momentum goes into the launch. As far as I can tell, that helps with the height. I think if I just do it like straight up, uh, which that was too late, I find it very hard to get the same height when standing still without any momentum. Like that was decent, but that would have just got me a clamber. So if I want like the full height, right? You got to be holding forward, at least, I think, right? I'm still learning as we go here. The jump timing is pretty tight. If you're having trouble with it, it's the instant before the nade blows up. That was pretty good, but it's very easy to miss this. Like if I'm too early, I went barely anywhere with that. The way I see it is when you jump the first half of your jump, you've got the most upward momentum. And as you get higher in the jump, you gradually lose that momentum until you hit the top and then you come back down. So what you're trying to visualize is you want to be jumping during the first half of your jump so you have the most upward momentum when the nade explodes, not the second half where you're already like airborne and the nade's just doing like a tiny little prop up. So the best result would be like the instant the nade blows up or better would be the, the instant before the nade blows up while you're still within like the first 20% of your jump height, like that. And of course we hurt ourselves every time we try to do this. So the best possible optimization of this would be to try to find this like sweet spot timing where you jump late enough that you get the upward momentum, but also early enough that you're high enough above the nade to take as little damage as possible, which the best I've found is like, it's around here or like maybe half shields that you can still get the full boost. And it's tough to do. It's going to take practice and it's never not going to be risky. It's, we'll talk about it. This also works with plasma nades and spikes, by the way, but I recommend that you do this almost exclusively with frags. Just look at the health I have left when I do it with the plasma, right? The plasmas actually do more damage when you're near them than frags do. So you're literally just about killing yourself. I am one bullet from death. It's just not ever worth it. And the spikes have a similar issue. If you're right above a spike when you jump, I'm dead. I just killed myself trying to do it. On top of the fact that I feel like the spikes don't pop you up as much, that was actually pretty good. So you could still get a pop up, but it's just way riskier. You're taking way more damage. Something important to keep in mind with frags though, is the detonation timer doesn't start till a frag hits the floor. So after touching the floor, it's like a second or a second and a half, something like that. If I throw it against the wall, the debt timer is not going to start until it hits the floor. Now it's a second or a second and a half, right? So depending on what you're trying to line up, if you want more time to set something up, you can bounce it off a wall. Or if you're like in a tight spot and you want to set up the fastest possible one, then you want to bounce it off the floor directly at your feet. So it all depends on what sort of nerdy movement you're trying to line up. Like, let's say I want to get top tower, like something like that, I guess, like... When would you do this, right? Like, if I'm winning a fight with somebody tower, like he's like stairs or something, or like up here, and I, I knock him to no shields, and I back him down, I'm full shields. And then I go for this like, just gangster rotation. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's fast, and if you skip the clamber, you might get like the element of surprise, you might be able to kill him, but it's just so risky. Like, you have to know that nobody's on nest or like in any position to cross you. Or something like this, like slide, nade low on the wall, curb slide, jump, oh, and then try to get up in the top. It's It works, it's just, it's like stylish, but not practical, right? That doesn't mean the technique isn't practical. It's just, you don't want to be doing this. This spot right here, I think could be used in a competitive environment though. Like something like that, right? Remember I'm, I'm nading off the floor here so I can get the earliest possible jump out for my timing. Instead of nading off the wall, 
and then waiting for it to hit the floor and then jumping later, which still works. It just takes a little bit longer. It all comes down to timing when you do something like this. Like that could be useful. And the reason being is just non-committal and it's sneaky. I didn't get it, right? I might not get it. I might go one shot too, which is the tricky part. But for example, let's say we got a teammate in Nest. He's crossing out C-plat, right? We're playing strongholds. He knocks him no shields. He backs down, calls it out. You know that guy's weak up there. You're down here. You throw one of these. Bam, we're in the action. Like ideally we skip the clamber, right? And then we're crossing, cleaning this guy up. And it's all about the element of surprise. You're playing off the opening that your teammate created in Nest. And it's a non-committal position, right? I can come back. I can do the tower jump, whatever I want. So... There's practical potential here. It's just hard to find locations where it's that good, you know, where you can like really coordinate something meaningful. Speaking of practicality, let's talk about this a little bit more and look at some examples of what you can do with nade jumping. So we're going to take a look at this video from EJ. Shout out to EJ, who put together a nade jumping showcase. It's a three-minute video. I'm going to be pausing and playing this quite a bit. So if you want to watch the full thing, I've linked it in the video description. But I'm basically just going to give each one of these jumps like a pass or fail and talk about whether or not I think it's practical or realistic to do in a competitive environment. And I mean, right off the bat, we've got this insane one to open the video right up to the top A catwalk here pretty sweet height he's getting off this like you gotta give him some respect for hitting the jump in the first place i don't think this is practical i'm gonna be honest though he's coming in like let's say we're collapsing as a team into a if we're collapsing on a we're opening up the long haul spawn so unless his timing is flawless he's getting shot in the back from long haul right now during the setup right he's hyper exposed to every angle on top of the fact that he's coming in well one shot highly risky and he's landing in a clamber so if anybody sees him throughout this process he dies fail honestly for this first one it's stylish but uh but not practical so i'm gonna be honest i was not aware of these sneaky spots in aquarius and right off the bat 343 if you happen to be watching please don't go patch crazy and patch all this right away i'm gonna say these two actually aren't practical so i've experimented with this myself it's actually harder than he's making it look the spacing needs to be perfect that area that you're jumping into is pretty tight if you're too high and too low you're not going to wedge in there perfectly so your your actual angle spacing to get into it is pretty tricky on top of the fact that once you are here you don't have much of a sight line over anything like yes if somebody comes down through the doorway you've got the element of surprise but you're doing a lot just to wedge yourself into a tight corridor with no real opportunity to help anybody else on the map it just doesn't seem practical uh, or really that effective for anything other than just sandbagging on one player, you know? Now, this, on the other hand, is pretty sweet. I didn't know that there were wall ledges up here. I didn't know about any of these spots. I actually think there is some practicality to a jump like this in a competitive environment. Fridge is a very vulnerable spawn, and it's an area where players like to collapse, and they're going to, you know, run through on the way to the flag, etc. If you happen to spawn in Fridge and you get the timing for it, you could very quickly perch yourself up here and jump onto a player hoping to spawn collapse. Even if your teammate spawns near you in fridge, they can kind of bait into the collapse and then you could be up there and kind of create something. So there might be an opportunity. This one right here I actually love for a couple reasons. He's coming in on a, a pretty sneaky angle up into the window. And the way that he set the jump up is actually kind of slick. He's uh, thrown the nade at the floor, but he's standing from a higher ledge. So the origin point of his jump is higher meaning he's putting himself in a position where he'll take less damage from the nade and also doesn't need as much of a boost to get up into a clamber here, right? If you have a teammate collapsing through the backside of the base at the same time, this is a pretty effective way to pinch, and I could see this being used in a competitive environment. The only issue is when you're coming through fridge side, the util spawn is generally open, especially if we're playing CTF. You might get challenged from somebody in this doorway. What you could do is, if you have two nades, you can nade jump and then nade clamber pinch the guy in the base and hopefully that nade you know gives you some timing to uh to get another killer to back out immediately we've got a nice little rotate here up the top mid this is pretty slick and of course the os is now up on top mid so you know that might be a fun way to get there i don't think that this is the most effective way to get to top mid i'm not going to be going for this personally uh if you're not already aware there's a skill jump that you can hit like a tiny little ledge 
that's on the side of the jump up on P2 on both sides, yellow and blue. And you can very conveniently crouch jump to that tiny ledge and then crouch jump to top mid, take no damage. You're still coming in from a sneaky angle, more effective than nade jumping and being almost one shot, you know, exposed. We got some more jumps up to the base window. These are pretty cool. Once again, pretty risky. The origin point of the jump, he's out in the courtyard. Like there's not really many scenarios where I think this makes sense. I spent some time experimenting and I put together a little curb slide nade lineup into the top of the window that maybe has potential. You have to think of a perfect scenario. Like if you've got the enemy's four dead and you know they're spawning in fridge, you got a player, a teammate on P2, you got a teammate on top car and you go for this curb slide nade rotation to get to the flag as quickly as possible as the fridge spawners have just come up in their spawn, let's say. There might be an opportunity for you to grab flag and then run it across the util bridge in the gen if you have perfect timing. Very risky. Pretty stylish though. You can shoot as you fly by. But straight in the courtyard, I don't know. This is pretty cool. This spot is accessible with thrust, by the way. If you're not aware, there's a little uh, cylinder you can stand on here with a sprint jump thrust, or I guess you can nade jump in there now too. Once again, we're one shot in the corner. I didn't know about this spot either, so shout out to EJ on this. I don't think this is effective though. I can't see P2, but they can see me. They could shoot me in the kneecaps, right? This is how you die, basically. <laughs> you get seen before uh, you can see them. I also don't think this is effective. I just think it makes more sense to just jump up to car three. Uh, and keep your shields. This is sick though. Nice rotation into the back of the base. That'll block the spawn if you're playing CTF. There are often situations where you find yourself trapped in this corner. And normally I'd use a grapple or a repulse to connect through here. It's pretty cool that this is possible. I will say this is insanely risky. And if you slightly miss it, like I wonder how many times he tried this before pulling it off. Because if you're slightly off, you're not going to make this jump happen. And then you fall to your death. On top of the fact that if you're in that corner and you have a nade in that corner, that nade is one of the most important things that keeps you alive and gives you safer options. You can throw a nade, drop to the ledge below, and stay alive that way, right? So it's like, why go for this insane risk, end up one shot in the back of the base, and maybe if it's perfect. This is a little better because you're jumping up into a position that's not directly in an enemy sight line, and they're not going to see you if they're coming up off of snipers. So they might not know that you're here immediately. It's cool that this is possible. Uh, very risky always, but... That's a little bit better. No point in doing this. Bottom mid to top mid in Argyle, you're going to get killed. You're going to get crossed center map. Same with this one. This is sick, but you're going to get crossed, right? Like you're exposing your backside to the entire map. It's just not practical. I love this one. Uh, Bubba, who's a skill jumper, was frustrated that there was an area of this map, the 343, but they're probably going to patch this now too, but there was a, a jump spot over here that you could get on back in the day, and then that was immediately patched. And it made it impossible to access the second part of his skill jump, which is this little physical ledge here, which for whatever reason they didn't patch. Now we can nade jump to it. This might actually have practical potential if you pick up the OS at the same time. You could nade jump your way up to the ledge, then activate the OS to immediately get those shields back. And there might be some, you know, some possible application with that. The fact that you can go straight up to the top is pretty incredible. He's probably sprinting before he jumps with perfect timing to get that type of height. You're not going to get that often. Uh, sneaky spot. We got bottom mid to top here. Top mid here. He skipped the clamber, which is pretty cool. Obviously, the repulse is way more effective. If you don't have that option and you happen to have the shields and a nade, then maybe you could find timing for this. I like this back tower. Maybe there's some potential because, once again, you're not exposed to a lot of different sight lines. You're in the back of tower here, and he skipped the clamber as well, so you, maybe you can make something sneaky happen there. Uh, I like this jump in this spot, but this is... A, why are you here? This actually, I like. I like this one. There's only one way to get on top of this camera, and it's with a repulse. But if you can find timing for this, it might be effective. If nobody's immediately pushing you, you've repositioned yourself to a sneakier area. This one I kind of like. This is one of the only non-patched sneaky ledges, I guess, on streets. We'll see if it sticks around. Uh, you can only get there with a repulse, and the repulse spawns right beside it. So it's more logical to use the repulse to get there. But this is an effective way to get up here, too. Sweet nade jump, but good luck ever lining this one up in a game. If you're in A, the C spawn is likely open right now. So you're probably getting crossed from Subway in the right-hand side as you're doing this, right? Unless you have teammates blocking and forcing them to B spawn. And if they force them to spawn B, then you got to have some immaculate timing and, and god tier uh, technique to pull this off mid-game unscathed. That's pretty cool. It may be practical, sort of, because you're not exposed to any sight lines. You're exposed to more once you get up on the balcony. You're going to have to hide once you're up here, you know? So it's better than the one on top of A, but still very risky. This is very exposed and out in the open. It's like an oddball collapse, and it's a 4v2. 
and you have timing, maybe you can come in and kill the ball carrier and grab the ball before it gets tossed off a balcony. That would be a crazy hero play. But, you know, if anybody wants to take the risk and give it a try, it's hard to imagine somebody in an esports tournament potentially foregoing tens of thousands of dollars to do something, you know, that could screw up an entire play for their team when there are other logical, effective options. So, nay jumping in Halo Infinite, is it a game changer? Uh, sort of not really. I'm definitely glad that it's back. It's something that's uniquely Halo, and it should have been here since launch. I think in the practical examples that we looked at, there is some potential with it. And a big thing to keep in mind is in social play, there is no friendly fire. So technically, if we're playing in social, you could throw nades at your teammates and launch your teammates if you coordinate something. So there's actually a lot of incredible creativity and potential there that we didn't even talk about. In a competitive environment, not as much. I think 95% of the time, the risk heavily outweighs the reward. 343, if you are somehow watching this, if it was up to me, I would actually go bigger and better than what you've currently done with nade jumping. I think like it's great that it's back, but considering how much the rest of Halo has evolved, I would go bigger with this. Like I would make the window to jump with it even wider. I'd make the launch bigger. I'd make it more effective for all nades. So like spike nades, make it so that you don't have to take very much damage and you can you still get the launch or make it so that you can move horizontally with the throwback, like throw it at a wall, jump and then fly over to the right or the left, right? Like go max passion and creativity. And yes, it might lead to some, you know, potentially awkward or like, you know, scenarios where you a nade blows up and you didn't intentionally launch the player but you did but that's also sort of the fun of halo so I, I think they're worried about the balance of everything which is understandable but just considering how powerful everything else is in this game if you want to make the the reward truly worthwhile go bigger like i want to fly with this thing or i don't know that's just what's on my mind right now i will definitely try to implement this in my gameplay so come by the twitch stream maybe we can learn some nade jumping together i'm sure there's plenty of untapped creativity that i didn't showcase or i'm not even aware of but for now i'll leave it with you guys what do you think of nade jumping do you think that there's potential with this technique how would you make it better if you could make it better i'd like to thank my patreon subscribers as always for helping support the channel this is a great way to support me and to play some halo with me if you're interested if you want to work with me on these techniques or anything else in one-on-one -on -one coaching i've got a link in the video description and that's it for this one if you guys want related content other tips and tricks right here beside me this is the way